Welcome back to Fox 32 Sunday. We're in the studio uh, having uh, left the governor at the Thompson Center. A uh, public interest law firm in Chicago filed a state lawsuit Friday challenging an Illinois regulation. It's the reg that allows the state to give tax credits to businesses. It's been controversial. Jacob Hubert is a senior attorney with the Liberty Justice Center. This uh, law group was started by the Illinois Policy Institute in 2011. IPI, of course, is a Chicago think tank and watchdog group that supports uh, free market principles. Jacob, the Policy Institute uh, also advocates for economic policies uh, that they say would create jobs and opportunity. Um, what's wrong with the way these credits have been implemented? Well, the law says that a business can get tax credits, if it's, if it's accepted for this EDGE tax credit program, it can get tax credits up to the amount of income taxes withheld from the new employees it hires in the state after it enters into a tax credit right, agreement. Now everybody knows that uh, some of the big companies and big organizations that have gotten these EDGE credits have included the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Sears out in the northwest suburbs, ADM, uh, the big downstate agribusiness giant that has moved its headquarters here to Chicago. Um, you're not singling out these companies because you want to see what the actual books reveal after you've subpoenaed the numbers, huh? Right. But why do you think Sears, for example, after getting these credits, has continued to shrink? Um, you're saying there have been too many companies that haven't added employees at all. That's right. After this law was enacted, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, which is in charge of implementing it, passed a regulation, wrote its own regulation, where they say that actually businesses can get tax credits based on not only the income taxes uh, paid by new people they hire, but also by people they already employed and uh, who just work on a new project or, or an existing project identified in their tax credit agreement. And as a result, tax credits are being issued that are much higher than what the law itself would allow. Now, how much higher? So it's been about $950 million so far since 1999. Almost a billion dollars has been given out. But um, how, why do you think that's, that's higher than it ought to be? And how, what, what's the order of magnitude here? Two times, three times. Well, we've uh, we've uh, got through Freedom of Information Act requests details about who's gotten these credits, how much, how many people they've hired, and it appears to us that at least half a billion dollars of the credits that have been issued have been in excess of what the law actually allows because the department re essentially rewrote the law through this regulation. All right, and uh, so. Uh, while you're limiting, you're, you have a fairly narrow scope here for your lawsuit, actually you oppose the whole idea of giving these credits. Well, right, the idea of singling and certain... And why is that? Why, why, why do you think they're a bad idea? Well, because, one, it's unfair. If one business doesn't have to pay any taxes uh, because he gets one of these deals and another business doesn't, that's not fair to the business that doesn't get the deals. It has an extra cost that its competitors don't have. So that's one problem. Uh, and another problem is, is the government's picking winners and losers in the marketplace by doing that. And the government isn't necessarily very good at picking winners right, and now, losers. Actually, I, I think I said ADM, had, had the downstate agri-giant, had gotten a, a, a tax credit. I know they were seeking it. I think in the end they didn't get it. So they moved some jobs to Chicago, but they moved others to Kentucky where they were getting a special deal. Okay. Now, the problem is uh, with Sears, I mean, I'm, I, I can certainly empathize with the employees there and the public officials here in Springfield. Uh, Sears was threatening to move out of state, taking those thousands of jobs. Isn't it better to have those jobs here than to lose them? What's better is to have a lower tax rate for all businesses to create a good business atmosphere that makes anybody looking to start a company want to be in Illinois, as opposed to picking out special favorites who the state essentially wants to bet on, because the state might not be making ideal bets. So you Instead, think it'd be better to have Sears move out of state? It'd be better to have lower taxes and then just let people compete freely. And hopefully, if Sears has a good business model, Sears will succeed here, or whoever ha has a good business model well, they said they were headed succeed out the here. Door. Well, you'd, you'd be willing to again, take that. State, Sears and other companies will likely want to be here if we have low tax rates. The reason companies want these special deals is because there are high taxes here in general, so they try to get out from under them. Let's give everybody relief instead, lower the rate across the board, and spur economic growth that way. I'm sure there are some public employees out there saying, well, wait a minute, uh, so how do we lower? the taxes across the board. We have this, this huge pile of uh, five and six billion dollars unpaid bills. 
Well, I mean, if you stop giving out cards, well, one thing you can do is if, instead of having some people pay zero and some people pay a lot, you can at least even it out a little more, right, without losing any tax money. But the problem isn't with the state's budget, isn't really that the state doesn't have enough revenue. The problem with the state's budget is the spending, and, and well, that's know, about, a whole other issue. You know, less than half of Illinois corporations actually pay the, corporate in the state corporate income tax. There are so many loopholes and, and so many, I mean, it looks, the, 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 the state's tax code looks like a piece of Swiss cheese. There are so many loopholes in it. Right. Well, you don't want that. You want something that's low and simple that everybody can understand so that business don't, don't have to scheme to be able to afford to be in Illinois. Just make it low so they want to be in Illinois and they don't have to do that Sorry, sort of so thing. So what's your advice? Bruce Rauner has uh, spent some time and, and uh, is, is friends with uh, some of the folks uh, that uh, pay your salary at the Illinois Policy Institute. Um, what's your advice to him? Well, my first... Blow this whole idea up. Well, my first item of advice would be repeal this regulation that we're challenging in this lawsuit and make our lawsuit go away. The administration could do that if it wants, and so we're hoping that they'll at least do that. And as far as the program... Have you told them that? I haven't. No, I, I don't have a line of communication to the governor. But uh, we, we, would, uh, we would hope that they would at least do that, and they should reconsider this whole program and, and push for actual tax relief across the board for all businesses in Illinois that's fair, that doesn't have the government picking winners and losers like it does through this EDGE program. Well, all right. Uh, Jacob Hubert, thank you very much for coming in. The, uh, the uh, acid test for uh, Governor-elect Rauner, who's going to be sworn in tomorrow at noon, uh, will come when the next big company approaches him with the handout. We'll see if he slaps that hand away or not. Um, we uh, will be right back uh, after a quick break with my reporter's notebook. Some thoughts on Governor-elect Rauner and his plan to start taxing services, such as those provided by lawyers and accountants, among many others. This is Fox 32 Sunday.